Hello moms and dads, boys and girls. Welcome to Storytime with Jamie. Today's an extra special day because, <laughs> all right. Hello moms and dads, boys and girls. Welcome to Storytime with Jamie. Today's an extra special day because I have several of my grandchildren here and they're actually going to act out one of the stories I wrote. So by all means today, if you like our story or if you like their acting, give us a thumbs up. You can always subscribe to my channel. And if you want to check out this book or any of my books, go to jamiebryantbooks.com. So today we're going to be reading the very first story, short story in the book I wrote titled Fish Guts and Other Bedtime Stories. The story today is called the spanking. Here we go. I will always remember my first grade teacher. Her name was Mrs. Ball. Mrs. Ball was of medium height and had brownish gray hair, which she wore in a perm style. She wore glasses and was very thin and had freckles on her face and arms. There may have been freckles on her legs too, that she wore these old, drab, homely dresses down to her ankles and brown baggy hose, so no one really knew. I suppose she was a good teacher because I learned the basics and made it to the second grade. However, she was not like my kind, sweet grandma who babysat me since I had been three months old. Mrs. Ball did not smile very much and I'm not even sure if she liked children. At any rate, she was my first grade teacher. This particular day seemed routine. Mrs. Ball taught that morning using the chalkboard for examples. We went to lunch at 1230 and afterwards returned to the classroom. Part of our after lunch routine was to place our heads down on our desk and rest for 30 minutes to an hour. I suppose this was to digest our food, or maybe to get us really sleepy so we wouldn't cut up during the afternoon lessons. This day was no different, and after giving the word to place our heads down on our desk, Mrs. Ball turned out the lights. Then Mrs. Ball did something she had never done before. She quietly announced to the class that she was stepping out for a minute and we were to keep our heads down and no one was to get up out of their seats for any reason. She had only been gone for a couple of minutes when Jimmy, one of the class clowns, got out of his seat and walked to the blackboard. He grabbed the only eraser our classroom had and tossed it across the room under Angela's desk. Angela wasn't about to get in trouble when Mrs. Ball came back in, so she subtly leaned over, picked up the eraser, and tossed it across the room under another student's <laughs> desk. I knew mean, it's probably too far. The quiet, okay, okay, hurry, go back and you can toss it again. Let's rewind it. Okay. Sorry. Angela wasn't about to get in trouble when Mrs. Ball came back in, so she subtly leaned over, picked up the eraser, and tossed it across the room under another student's desk. This quiet tossing of the chalkboard eraser continued for what seemed like hours, but was actually only a few short minutes. Well, you probably guessed by now that the eraser eventually landed under my desk. I looked around trying to figure out who exactly threw it? After a glance or two around the room, I realized it really didn't matter who threw it. I just needed to get rid of it. Should I throw it under someone else's desk? Or should I take this as an opportunity to put the eraser back where it belonged? Time was running out and I had to act quickly. You could have heard a pin drop in that classroom as I reached under my desk, scooped up the eraser. I must be quick, I thought. I hurried to the chalkboard 
and placed the eraser in its place. As I turned around, we all heard the sound and looked up in unison as the door opened and in walked Mrs. Ball. The look on my face must have shown shock or guilt because her question was directed right at me. Jamie, why are you out of your seat? She said sternly. As I opened my mouth to answer, Mrs. Ball interrupted my words with, it really doesn't matter. You heard the rules when I left the classroom. In her cold voice, she said, come here. I slowly walked over to her desk. She took her large brown wooden chair and brought it out front. Okay, it's all right. Bend over my lap here and receive your punishment, she commanded. A hundred thoughts went swirling through my head all at once. I'm innocent, I thought to myself, but this wasn't changing my situation. Then all at once, I looked down and realized I wasn't, I was wearing a dress and boots. Jamie Horton, did you not hear me? Mrs. Ball exclaimed. I nodded and proceeded to slowly walk toward her with pleading eyes. I made one last attempt to look to my classmates to see if anyone was going to speak up for me. We were all six years old and pretty terrified of Mrs. Ball. So counting on anyone coming forward on my behalf was hopeless. I swallowed hard and proceeded to bend over placing my body downward on her lap. Immediately, she began spanking me, swat after swat, using her firm, skinny hand. She really had a pretty good swing for an older, frail kind of lady. I don't recall being in a lot of pain, but my face was beet red from embarrassment. Finally, she swung for the last time and the punishment was over. <laughs> With tear-filled eyes, I looked up into the faces of my classmates. The only one who dared look me in the face had an expression of guilt. Slowly, I walked back to my desk, and even more slowly, I eased into my seat. My backside was a little extra sore than it had been the day before. I'm sure for the remainder of the day, I heard very little my teacher said. I was mad at her. However, I did look back later on that day and smile. The picture that brought a smile to my face was this. There I was in last year's purple polyester dress that was a little too short. On my white little legs, I wore black, almost knee-high rain boots. My six-year-old skinny body was kicking my boots back and forth with every swat, hoping all the time my panties weren't showing because my dress was too small. Ah, what'd you think about that, boys and girls? A pretty good story? Yes, yes. Well, this story is found in Fish Guts and Other Bedtime Stories. These are my grandchildren who helped act out the story today. Tucker, everybody give a wave. Olive, give away. Judah Bear, give away. Uh, Rayma played me in this story. And Elizabeth played Mrs. Ball. Ah, ah, if you liked it, boys and girls, give us a thumbs up. You can subscribe to our channel. And as always, if you want to check out Fish Guts and other bedtime stories or any of my books, visit jamiebryantbooks.com. Till next time, goodbye, goodbye. Bye.